Hello students, this is Dr. Fezan Mirza. We are discussing the di condition diabetes mellitus and how biosensor and dipstick can be used there for noting down the level of glucose in urine or blood. Now diabetes mellitus. What is diabetes mellitus? It is the inability of the body to regulate blood glucose concentration. This condition could be there because either there is insufficient insulin or the insulin is sufficient but the receptor of insulin is not there so for example if the person who is suffering from diabetes mellitus there is the condition there can be one type in which this hormone is just absent so this hormone being absent we know if the hormone is not there no matter how many receptor molecules you may have for insulin the body is not going to respond this cell will just not respond to insulin these these channels will stay in the cytoplasm because the insulin molecule is not there. In the other type of diabetes mellitus, the insulin, is the insulin secretion is very well there, but the receptor on the target cell is missing. So although the insulin is released, it keeps looking for this target uh, site on the, on the, uh, throughout the body, but it just cannot find it. So again, that can cause diabetes mellitus. So basically there are two types of diabetes mellitus, one in which the insulin is not there and the other in which the uh, receptor is not there. Insufficient insulin production, diabetes mellitus is called type 1 diabetes mellitus or insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. In most cases, this is of juvenile onset or it, it, is show, it shows itself in a very early age. The other diabetes mellitus, which is type 2, insulin independent, is, uh, is normally adult onset, mostly but not always. Now, how a person, when a person is suffering from diabetes mellitus, the person either a uh, type 1, type 2, the person is going to pass out a lot of glucose in urine. We know that the glucose molecules, they get reabsorbed back into the blood in nephron. So if you go back to nephron, we know that once the, uh, once the filtrate comes here, the filtrate starts to travel into the proximal tubule. And this proximal tubule is the region where the glucose molecules are reabsorbed back into the blood. So your urine which actually passes out from the collecting duct uh, is not having any glucose molecules. We already have discussed in detail how glucose molecule gets reabsorbed across the PCT cells and how the urine is not having glucose anymore because all the glucose gets reabsorbed in the blood in the PCT. But a person who is suffering from diabetes mellitus will have so much of glucose traveling in the proximal tubule that the proximal tubule will end and still glucose will not be absorbed because it was in so much quantity that even the brush border and all the co-transporter could not reabsorb all. So yes, the filtrate will end up having glucose in it. The filtrate will then pass ahead into the nephron. It will come into the collecting duct and it will go to the renal pelvis. It will go to the ureter and the urinary bladder and it will be released out. So this person's urinary bladder will end up uh, uh, allowing urine to go out which will have a lot of glucose in it and that basically can be used as a diagnostic tool of uh, of how whether a person is suffering from diabetes mellitus or not because a normal individual should never have glucose in urine. So initially uh, dipsticks were used for this process to measure the glucose quantity in urine. A dipstick is like a strip of paper which is having a, a reactive end and at the reactive end of the dipstick uh, there are some chemicals adhered to it and these chemicals actually are enzymes so if this is the dipstick I'm just uh, I, be, I can hold the dipstick from here and this is the reactive end of the dipstick the reactive end of the dipstick if I, if I just magnify this is this actually is having three different um, chemicals here uh, in fact four different chemicals there are two uh, two enzymes which are immobilized the first enzyme is glucose oxidase the second enzyme is uh, peroxidase then potassium iodide and chromogen are also uh, impregnated onto this uh, strip at this point. What's the function of these all compounds here? So if the dipstick is there, I collect a urine sample in beaker and I want to test whether my urine sample is having glucose or not. So what I'll do, I'll just place this dipstick's reactive end in the beaker in which I have collected my urine sample and this, this reactive dipstick should change color if there is glucose in my urine. If glucose is absent or if it's less than this value of 1.0 milligram per cm cube, then the color will stay this. And if the color stays this, it means that there is no glucose in my urine. But if the color changes to a value to this kind of shade or a stronger color or even more of these. So they actually are reflecting the amount of glucose present in my urine, which actually shows that the 
that girl yeah, might be suffering from diabetes mellitus. How the reactive end works? The reactive end works because of these two enzymes and potassium iodide and chromogen. Now what the glucose oxidase is doing? The glucose in urine is, uh, cat is, is converted into gluconolactone and H2O2 by the enzyme glucose oxidase. Gluconolactone is also called as gluconic acid. So once these are, these are turned, uh, glucose oxidase turns glucose in urine into these compounds, H2O2 is then further broken down by peroxidase uh, enzyme into a compound that can react with potassium iodine and chromogen to promote color change. So the amount of color change actually reflects how much H2O2 was produced and the amount of H2O2 in turn reflects how much glucose was there in the urine sample. The more the glucose will be there, the more the H2O2 will be produced, the stronger the color chain will be. So this is how the dipstick works. But dipstick is history. It's still used, but it's not that efficient anymore. It's not that it's not used that commonly anymore because now we have biosensors. Biosensors include glucometer. Uh, most of you might already be aware this is a glucometer device. This is a digital meter. There are set, there are a set of buttons here with which you can operate it, and this is a strip. This strip is having the enzymes Im the enzyme immobilized here and you prick your finger this is spot and you allow a blood drop to come out. The blood drop then goes into the into the this uh, strip through capillarity and here it reacts with the enzyme and the digital reading can be seen. This digital reading is not in milligram per deciliter, uh, deciliter. so this cannot be don't uh, don't just think that how can a person be 5.9 milligram per deciliter of blood the person cannot be this low. Uh, this is a different unit. So, glucometer set comprises of three different parts, a lens set, a biosensor strip, and a digital meter. So, in this diagram, you can see the digital meter, the strip, but not the lens set. So, what the lens set is? Uh, the lens set basically is just a metallic needle, and this needle is used to prick the fingertip. And when you prick the fingertip, it allows a blood drop to come out. The blood drop that oozes out is then used for noting down the blood glucose. Lenses should never be shared because since they are piercing through the body, they can be a source of transmitting infection from one person to another. Biosensor strip. This is strip, which is this thing here. This is strip is having two ends. One end is where uh, you insert it into the jack of the meter. This is the jack of the meter, so you insert the strip here. And the opposite end of the strip the other end is having the immobilized enzyme. Now here you don't have two enzymes, you just have one enzyme glucose oxidase. So the blood from the pricked finger, which was pricked using the lens set, the blood oozed out, the blood is then allowed to come in contact with the strip, this end of the strip, and while the other end was already inserted into the jack. The moment you insert this strip into the jack of this meter, the meter turns on. And then you just break your finger quickly and then you allow this blood to come in contact with this this uh, this strip so uh, the reaction then proceeds what is the digital meter doing glucose oxidase on the strip it breaks glucose into gluconolactone and h2o2 we know that now the products which are made here they generate a tiny current and this tiny current is sensed by electrodes present in the meter and these electrodes can then later on amplify and display this, uh, this tiny current as a digital reading on the meter. The reading on the meter is proportional to the amount of gluconolactone produced, which in turn is dependent on how much glucose was there in blood. What are the advantages of using a biosensor rather than a dipstick? It's the value is precise and accurate. It gives, a, it gives the current glucose reading, the current concentration of glucose in blood, it, is, it just gives a very quick result. And it gives the real-time glucose concentration, which is extremely important for treatment or interventions. For example, if, uh, if, if a person is to, is to inject insulin in his or her blood uh, in, the, in the body, the person should know the baseline glucose level and that can only be seen using a biosensor because that gives you the current value of amount of glucose present in the blood at that time. 